Hey guys, Aaron here, coming at you with a knife review, a full custom knife review. Uh, I'm putting up a lot of content right now because work's been insane, I'm home from work sick, and I have some time on my hands, so enjoy it. Um, you guys have seen this knife a bunch, I've talked about it quite a bit, it's my one of my favorite knives that I have, and uh, um... I'm finally getting around to doing a review. I wanted to give it a lot of pocket time, and uh, I've done that. So, you know, I'm very excited about it. I, I just, it's a fantastic knife. <laughs> uh, so, let's get right into it. Most of you guys are going to be part of the knife community. If you're not really involved in the custom knife world or anything like that, you may not be super familiar with uh, Graham Knives or John Graham. I understand that. Um, he's a knife designer based in Cleveland, Tennessee, which fortunately for me is only about two hours south of Nashville. And he is the designer slash um, inventor of the razel blade shape there. Uh, pronounced razel, not razzle. Some people call it razzle, and, and that kind of tweaks John out a little bit. But, um, let's see... He uh, has a couple of licenses with CRKT. You can buy production, pug, you can buy production models of his knives that are nice. I have. Hang on, I'm not totally prepared for the video. I have one of his productions here, um, and yeah, I mean they're available out there. He has some fixed blades and all of that stuff. So, kind of cool. Um, this particular knife is the Razel GT, and I believe GT stands for Gentleman's Tactical, which um, I'll be the first to say that this is a much more gentlemanly knife than um, some of his more beefier folders. And, uh, oh, also I was going to say, um, I'll annotate it somewhere along here, but um, I was able to drive down there the day that he ground the blade for this knife and watch it done, kind of watch my knife being born, and that was a really special experience. So um, I would highly recommend you guys going and watching that too. It's a long video, but if you're at all interested in knife making, it's fascinating. So anyway, just to kind of get into it, um, it's a very elegant knife, very pocket friendly. It's seven and a half inches long with a three and a quarter inch blade. Um, the blade steel is actually marked on there with its Paul Boss uh, heat treat stamp as 154 cm. Um, and it is uh, 0.125 inches thick. And the, uh, the handle scales are titanium with an orange peel finish. And they are 0.144 inches thick. Um, giving you an overall width here of 0.45 inches thick. Um, and by means of my new digital scale, thank you mom, the knife weighs exactly 3.7 ounces. So it's not a heavy knife for a full titanium uh, folder custom. It's it's very manageable size and weight. Um, the ergos on it are incredibly comfortable. The knife just rests in your hand very naturally. As always, you know I love flippers. The flipper tab forms a very, a very um, effective choil there, locking it into grip. The handle scales are not particularly grippy. They do, if you can see it, they do have an orange peel texture that provides a little bit of grip, but um, I would not say that this knife is the most secure gripped knife. It's got a little bit of a slippery nature to it. This makes up for a lot of that. Um, this makes up for some of it, kind of wrapping around and locking in against your uh, against your your pinky there. But it is it's more of a, it's more of a an elegant pocket knife as opposed to a tactical folder or a hard to use work knife. This isn't something that I would want to try and stab through a wood wall. Although if you're familiar with John's stuff at all, I'm sure it would do it just fine. Um, it has a little bit of a forward choil here. If you wanted to choke up on the knife a little bit, you have that option. Overall, it's just a fantastically comfortable knife. I can't say enough about it. Um, <coughs> excuse me. If uh, John's invention of the razel wasn't enough, um, enough of a contribution to the knife world, that is, then his invention of the tail clip certainly was. This is my favorite pocket clip, hands down. And uh, I'm going to roll in a picture of what it looks like when it's in your pocket right now. 
So you can see that it really is very um, secure, concealed. Um, if anything was to happen to the clip, if God forbid it was to just bink, snap off, the knife's just going to drop into your pocket. It's not going to work its way out. Um, it's ambidextrous. You don't have to, without having to put a big clip down the show side. It's just my favorite clip design, and I really wish, I mean, more, I don't know if John licenses it or not, I have no idea, but I wish that this was available on more knives. Really, really just knocks it out of the park with this clip. <coughs> Excuse me, guys. Um, yeah, no, I can't say enough good stuff about that clip. Um, the Razel GT is a flipper design knife, and the one thing I will say is that John really makes his flippers well. The detent is strong, providing plenty of uh, centrifugal force to get the blade open. Um, the knife rides on bearings, so it's incredibly smooth all the way around. One of the smoothest knives I've felt next to maybe the Kershaw Tilt or something like that. Um, I mean, it's just, you know, fast, locks up solid, you can see the lock bar right there, no movement in any direction, and it's easy to disengage. And I will say that when I first got the knife, it had a little bit of lock stick, you, you could hear a click when, I, when you disengaged it, and uh, it just needed to wear in a little bit. That's fairly common for these custom titanium frame knives, they just, the lock bar just kind of needs to wear in and get seated, but, um, Overall, the deployment and lockup on this knife is excellent. The lockup is a hair later, maybe at like six. Let me look at this. I'd say it's right around 60%, 50 to 60%. That's not a big deal to me. Um, I think there's a ton of life left in the knife, but you know, it's just a hair later than I like to see sometimes. But uh, I mean, by no means is that a bad thing with this knife. Like I said, it's really, you know. Uh, you know, a hair's width of a lock bar on the blade tang is not something that I want to see. That, that doesn't make me feel very good at all. So, blade shape and materials. Uh, the blade shape um, reminds me a lot of a straight razor, honestly. The whole, the whole knife does, to be honest with you. But you've got a nice, long, straight cutting edge with a tiny bit of belly, and then you have a sharpened razor tip there. And um, what that's going to allow you to do is it's going to allow you to get, um, you know, you've got a good slicer. You have a very functional tip here that's got a lot of strength behind it. You have an, oop, almost cut myself. You have another little tip here that you can use. And you have this whole front sharpened edge that you could rock cut the front with. You could press cut. You know, you can catch the belly there. You've got a whole slicing edge if you want. It's really just a very useful blade shape. Now, John does make some knives that have almost a 90 degree, so instead of it, almost a 90 degree front edge. This is kind of more of a reverse Tonto, um, but I, I, I just think this is a fantastic blade shape. It's unusual, too. A lot of people haven't seen it before, and I think it, I think it frankly, just to be honest, I think it looks really cool, too. Um, the blade steel is 154 CM. I know guys get a lot of heartburn about that. They think it's a cheap steel, a subpar. I mean... It's not, <laughs> straight up. It's got a very high chromium and molybdenum, molyb molybdenum content to it. So you're going to get um, a lot of wear resistance. It's a true stainless steel. And um, the edge retention on it is going to be excellent. The nice thing about it, too, is it's relatively easily sharpened as well. So, or stropped back to, um, back to razor sharpness. I haven't had to put the stones to this knife once since I got it. You just strop it out every once in a while. And uh, you shouldn't ever have to worry about it. Um, it's also worth pointing out that, as you can see by the blade stamp, um, John uses Paul Boss Heat Treat. And that will really make or break the, the, the quality of your knife's blade, is whether or not the heat treat is done correctly. And Paul Boss is known in the business for doing it correctly. So, um, <coughs> sorry guys. Uh, just to kind of wrap it up, um, I, I mean, I feel very fortunate to own this knife. It's one of the nicest knives that I own in my entire collection. It's a great EDC size um, with just enough blade to handle pretty much anything that you're going to encounter in an everyday EDC roll. Um, the unfortunate thing is John's knives are hard to come by. They're expensive when you can find them, and they just don't come up on the market that often. The last Razel GT that I saw being sold on the open market was at Knife Art around $700. Bucks. Um, I've seen some of his bigger folders available from time to time on the USN and stuff like that for, you know, between five and seven hundred dollars, depending on what you're getting. Um, his fixed blades are usually three to five, 
but they're all excellent knives. Um, something to keep in mind is that you're paying for something that's handmade. This knife, and this is something that's important to remember with custom knives, this knife started out its life as an assortment of screws, bar stock titanium, and bar stock steel. It was John's artistry with his craft that turned it into this tool that it is now. And I mean, you know, that's all it was. It was just raw material that he crafted into the knife that it is. Um, judging by how long it took to grind the blade by itself, I'm going to guess that there are more than 40 man hours worth of work into this folding knife alone. So you're paying for um, a lot of knife. You're paying for, you know, a one-of-a-kind, you know, a one-of-a-kind just piece of artwork that someone has made for you to your specifications. That's an important thing to keep in mind in the custom knife world. A lot of people choke on the prices of some of these knives. But you're a collector of... of you're, you're, once you get into knives of this caliber, the differences between you and an art collector, very small. So, that's it, guys. John makes a knife called the Wee Razel, and he actually just sold a few of them on the USN. I'm kind of kicking myself for not buying one. But, um... That's the next knife I want to get from him, and it's a small pocket fixed blade. I love small pocket fixed blades, so maybe I can get it on the next batch that he does. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed it. Hope you liked the knife. I'm really looking forward to your comments. As usual, there's a link in the description of my website with a full write-up, um, some links to some of John's videos talking about the tail clip and the razel and stuff like that. And um, leave a comment over there. Leave a comment over here. I really appreciate it all. That's it. Thanks a lot, guys. Aaron, out of here.